Hello lovely people, Quant Asylum QA403 is, not probably, but is the best analyzer for the money. How cool would it be if it would be working with REW? And now, it can. So if you know anything about this, you know that this thing has its own software that works with proprietary connection, it doesn't need any drivers, it doesn't have any ASIO drivers, and this thing cannot work with anything else apart from this. However, one cool guy made an ASIO drivers for it. So I'm going to show you how to install it, how to configure everything, and how does it work with REW. If you want to find ASIO drivers, just go to Google and enter QA403 as your driver. Now, the first one is the forum thread, and the second one is the GitHub. If you go to here into GitHub, then you have to scroll down and click on this. If you're looking for the installer, see this? And here at the bottom, here, you have the ASIO EXE. Download this, install this, and this is gonna be your driver. When you install this driver, if you're gonna go to REW and preferences, if you click on ASIO, here, you're going to find ASIO 401. So it is named as 401 because it works. The same driver works for the older one, 401, 402, and the newer one, 403. If I click on it now, it's going to say that it cannot find the device, which is fine. Now, probably the main question arises, why do you need on REW? So as I was playing with this thing and I was playing with the software, I know REW like very, very good. This one, I still need to get used to it. And my perception is that that this software that is supplied with this thing is amazing if you want live data, if you're monitoring what's happening, if you make changes and see and want to see what's happening straight away, because it does give you all the data that is live, it gives you RMS power, it gives you voltage and everything. However, for my purpose, I'm publishing everything on YouTube, on videos, on Facebook. I need the graphs to look good. And there's no better software for graphs than REW. One thing that I kind of didn't like with this Quant Asylum software is that on x-axis, when you do like power versus THD, it doesn't let you to choose an option in volts. So you have dBV or dBU. So for engineers, for people that know that stuff, it's perfectly fine. But for me, for my viewers, and for like simple people, we need simple regular volts. And this doesn't do that. REW, however, does that. Now, there are a few little things that you need to do if you want to use this thing with REW. So let me connect it first, and then I'm going to show you what I mean. So I connected the device to the laptop by USB as normal, and now I'm trying to select the driver. However, if I'm going to try to select it, and it's going to give me an error message, just because I have this program opened already and it kind of hijacks the Quant Asylum device. So you need to bear in mind that this device can run only with one program at a time. So you cannot run it on both of them. If I'm going to try again, it's perfectly fine. So we select inputs and outputs as usually you select the sample rate for amplifier measurements and probably DSPs. I'm always using 96K. Now the ASIO driver itself by default kind of limits this device to be it's super safe. So on the output, it's going to give you only the lowest setting of the voltage, which is like 0.3 of volts. And on the input, it's going to be least attenuation. So you can have all the way up to 40 volts. In order to change that, you need to make a little file. So if I'm going to go here and wherever the SEO is, okay, here, uh, if you see, it's like all the usage instructions, and we're going to click on this configuration. So this device needs a little file. So this is an example of the configuration file. And we have full scale input, full scale output, and the buffer size. So what we need to do, we need to just literally copy this, put it in a normal notepad, just like that, and save it in PC 
local disk, which is C, users, and whichever, whatever your name of the user is. And you just paste that file in there. And basically, whenever you fire up the as your drivers, it's going to pull information from this file. If there's no such file, then it's going to go to default, which is least output and maximum input. So for this, I changed everything to 18 plus 18 plus 18. That's going to give me 8 volts output and 8 volts input. If I will want to measure like amplifiers all the way up to 40 volts, what I have to do, I have to change this, the input level, to a higher value. So in this case, you can see here at the bottom, you can change it to D these preset values because inside there's no gain knob. Everything is on relays and relays need specific specific values. So if you want to measure amplifiers, you're going to choose like plus 36 and then you're going to save it, that file, and close it. When you make changes to this file, uh, you would want to reconnect the device. So what I'm doing, I'm you can close the program. What I'm doing is just go to Java and go to ASIO again, and I'm going to select it again. And then it's basically applying the new settings. So now with those settings, it's going to output our eight volts out and it can take all the way up to 40 volts in. So perfectly to measure amplifiers. If I want to measure DSPs, then I could potentially lower these with the, that setting file. Now, the other thing that you have to do, uh, because this is not calibrated, the output is not calibrated. In the original software, everything is calibrated, but for this one is not. So we need to do that. And you do that exactly the same as you would do with using Scarlet or whatever. So in this case, I'm just going to choose a tone, a thousand hertz, and minus 3 dB. I'm going to play that tone. The relay clicked and here I have 6.63 volts. This is just literally the outputs. And I'm going to go to calibrate and I'm going to enter 6 times 6.3. And I'm going to press calibrate, calibrate. And now everything is calibrated so you can use either volts, either dBFS. If I'm going to choose 1 volt, 0, 9, 9, 2, 1 volt. If I'm going to choose 5 volts, 5 volts, exactly, 499. Nine. So it's going to be discrepancy a little bit. But yeah, what you have to bear in mind that on 0 dBFS, it will give you 9.3 volts, so more, and it goes into clip a bit. So the normal level that you're supposed to use the maximum is minus 1 dBFS, which gives you 8.3 volts. Now for amplifiers, it's way too much. For typical car audio amplifiers, the maximum output that we're going to need is 4 volts. Because with the gains all the way down, we need 4 volts to max it out. And it gives 399. Perfect. So once you do that calibration, when you set the ASIO file with the settings, it's basically, that's it. You can use it. And you can make amazing and pretty graphs. So I just opened a different file because I did. I was playing with it. I was measuring different outputs, different inputs. I was trying different things, basically to see is there any difference between like attenuation on this. And the main thing is if you use plus 18 dBV or less, it kind of disconnects the attenuation and you're going to have much better measurements. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to overlay distortion. This is distortion versus level. So we can see this is the dBV of attenuation on the input side. So you have a few options. You have 18, 24, 30, 36, and 42. Uh, above 18, you can go lower than 18, but above 18, it enables the relay and it attenuates the signal and the distortion measurements are not as great. So look, if I'm going to show you THD plus noise. There we go. This is going to be much cleaner. So 30, 36, and 42. So you can see this 42 all the way up is you have lowest distortion. We have 0 0.01. And if you go with 18 plus or lower, that distortion is much, much lower. So if you want to measure amplifiers with like 40 volts, which is like 300 watts or something into 4 ohms, this attenuation is perfectly fine. 
But for DSPs, I would recommend to use plus 18, or even if you're measuring amplifiers at 5 watts power of output, then you change the attenuation to plus 18, and you're going to have much less distortion of the, th the thing itself. So basically, it's not going to influence any of your measurements at all. And that's pretty much it. If you want more information, I highly recommend just go to this GitHub and just read this information, how to do the configuration and everything, because here everything is explained very, very in detail. And one thing, the buffer size, I just put the highest buffer that I can, because why not? But now I'm super, super excited that I can use this thing with REW. If I will want to make any kind of on the fly adjustments, probably I'm going to use this software that is provided with the device. But if I need pretty looking graphs, I will be using REW. Now, one thing that is super, super good with this thing is all the extra stuff that this device can do which is all of these. It can measure all these things automatically. REW can do less, much less, like THD versus level, THD versus frequency, and some intermodulation. But this can do all of these extra things. So if I will need something from here, I'm going to use the original software. But for typical pretty graphs that I always publish on Distortion Factory or on my videos, I will be using REW. So that's it. This is a little update that I wanted to share with you because I'm super excited that this device opens up to literally any software that you want to use it with. You can use, because there's not only REW, you have like Arta or I don't know how they're called. There's many other softwares that you can use to measure whatever you want to measure. So again, I feel very excited. Just want to say a huge shout out to this guy. I'm not going to even try to pronounce his name because I believe he's French or something. But yeah, amazing job, buddy. Thank you very much for the SEO drivers. Thank you for making them and thank you for supporting. And thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.